Oh, we exalt him, we praise him, we magnify him. He is our king, he is our Lord, he is our God. We are his children. We declare it today, hallelujah, in the name of Jesus. You are holy, holy, holy God, hallelujah. You are mighty one, you are our redeemer. You are our King, oh King Jesus, King Jesus, fill your people, remove the bondage in the name of Jesus, set us free in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. Saints, I just want you to sit, I just can't, I just, I'm so excited about the word of God. I just, listen, we're going to deal with some fears here, but before that, you see, you cannot truly declare you're a child of God and you're marinating in fear, failure anxiety, this, that, all those affairs and the devil comes up against us, especially at vulnerable times. But before we do the deal with affairs, I need us to stay focused on the hope that lies before us, the new heaven and the new earth, Revelation 21. And I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth were passed away and there was no more sea. You see, when you're, you're here, you're here on earth, you're seated in the heavenlies. Remind yourself of where you are seated and remind yourself of the hope that lies before you. Otherwise, you will let everything around you overwhelm you. The word of God says, and I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them and be their God. Saints, that's us. Do you understand who you are and whose you are? Oh, Satan hopes that you don't. When you sing and you worship, I am a child of God, you might not even be able to stay standing when what that means hits you. The word of God says, and God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. And he that sat upon the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. And he said unto me, Write, for these words are true and faithful. And he said unto me, It is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. I will give unto him that is a thirst of the fountain of the water of life freely. He that overcomes shall inherit all things, and I will be his God, and he shall be my son. But the fearful and the unbelieving and the abominable and the murderers and the whoremongers and sorcerers and idolaters and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burns with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. Saints, God calls us as a people, as his people. He says who we are. He says who he is. He also says who we are not to be as in bear fruit that is not in line with his word. You tell a tree by its fruit. So we could declare all that we want. And we are declaring I am a child of God. But then you've got to make sure that the things that are there that are not of him must be removed. And the word of God, that's why we have to deal with fear. Because the word says, but the fearful. Because you see, fear and unbelief go together. The only fear that we are supposed to have is the fear of God, the reverential fear of God. Anytime fears come, overwhelming fears, anxiety, we don't want it, but we are not to leave it there. Get help. The enemy is using whatever's going on in your life to bring fear in because he knows the word says it. The fearful shall have their part in the lake of fire. The unbelieving. Now, I did not write the word. So when people say, but, but what is that fearful? Mm. Because you see, when you examine fear, it's a form of idolatry because you're actually focusing more on someone else who is not God. 
Because you see, the fear of God is what is supposed to be prevalent in our life. Any other fear is a subtle form of idolatry that we may not know how to root out, but there is a way for it to be rooted out. You cannot overcome what you're not willing to confront. You've got to confront those fears. You've got to confront those fears. The unbelieving. Sometimes when we're going through our stuff, we forget to go to the word and remind ourselves this is our reality. Not what we're seeing in the natural. It's not what we see. It's what the word of God says. This is our reality and this is why if we understood he calls us to stand on his word and get help if we are finding ourselves as if we, 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 we can't move forward. Listen, we are called to walk in power and authority. God is raising up an army that when that army goes forth, powers of darkness will flee. The reason why we may not be walking in that authority is because there's bondage in us that needs to, to go. It has come in from all different, whether it's generational, foundational, even intentional sin in our own life. And unbelief is another form of idolatry because if you, if you don't believe the God of the Bible, then you believe another God. It's as simple as that. You're either following Jesus or following Satan. There's no in between. Now is the time for those things to be identified and rooted out. Sometimes we think a problem is this when a problem is really root this out, this out, this out, then the problem goes. The abominable, the murderers, the whoremongers, the sorcerers, the idolaters, and all liars, all liars. If you tell a little piece of a lie, you're a liar. You're lying. All, it doesn't say liars that are not saved are in the pit of hell. It says all liars. So don't allow cultivate of lying to grow. Don't let our tree grow. Confront those things. Because sometimes to get ourselves out of situations, we exaggerate other situations. You are lying. Now, saints, while we are wanting God to turn our situation around, these are the things that we need to ask God to help us to deal with through the power of his word. Because you will find that when these things begin to be identified and rooted out, as in we're taking the log out of our eye, whatever splinters are existing in our family members, will go or we are going to be able to deal with it in a way where we will wonder if we are the same person. You know, a, a, a young man um, shared and he um, had been to, there's a new series that um, Pastor Chris started. Um, I could never get the words correct. Act like a man. See the men here know it. Act like a man. And um, it's an awesome series that he started. But how I know how awesome it is, is because, and this is, this is important to share here, is because you can tell a tree by its fruit. You don't know uh, if anything is really worthwhile till you see if fruit is coming out. Okay? That's why we tarry, because we know there's fruit coming out in people's lives. Fruit in line with the word of God. And he was sharing that he just he could, couldn't wait, couldn't like... I think the, the it started Thursday. Because it's this week coming. It's not, it's next week. Okay. But it started, let's say, the Thursday, and then Tuesday we had Bible study. And that person wasn't able to come. But as we were driving out, because my husband had gone ahead, um, again, the message, have to, have, to, have to talk to you. And I'm like, I need to go, because my husband is at home. I have to go. And so he came the next day because I, I, couldn't, I couldn't stop. He was somewhere up the street and I was already driving off. And he just wanted to say, he just wanted to say that, you see, the enemy will use fear in different ways because we're going to deal with fear right now. Fear in different ways and will hamper us. So this is a young man, a husband, and he's sharing something. 
me sharing that what he heard at the Bible study, because you see, men of God and women of God don't always know everything about how they are called to be to answer the call. That's why you have discipling groups. That's a discipling group because everything can be taught on a Sunday. And he just couldn't wait to, t to, to tell me. And he said he will, he'll give the testimony with all the details himself. But what he was like, what he heard so removed a fear that he had, that he had to, because whatever it was, act like a man. Um, it, 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 was the f it was the spark that lit him to go and deal with a, a situation with his mom and, and so that was not being dealt with and was very serious because you see, a lot of things affect us indirectly. So we can't live in our little bubble. When there's stuff going on with the in-laws or you, the mother or whoever, you know, we can't live in a bubble. And what happened, and what happened with him was that he was so excited to say that, you see, the thing about it is, sometimes, and I, and I made a statement, that when the stuff is moved from you, you will wonder if you are the same person. And when he had to address the situation, normally he would be, you know, angry. You know, this has to get done. And this is not done and done. And he said, you know, I spoke the truth and I was shocked at how I was sounding because that was not normally me. And that's just from God moving. Aside from he will come from time to time to tarry because, you know, Sometimes, you know, people have jobs and they can't come for the whole day and whatever. But, uh, but you see, it, it's something lit from, I'm not trying to promote that Bible study, but I am telling you, anything that can help you, go to, right? Because it's open to anybody, um, me, men of course. But at the end of the day, he said that was the, f the, the spark that lit him. And as he went, all kinds of things got cleared up. And he's still shocked at his tone because normally it's angry and it escalates. You understand what I'm saying? And reconciliation took place. Y so, you know, you tell a tree by its fruit. You need to confront these things. You cannot go on leaving it and saying, God, what's going on? But you have to access where you can get help. Do not stay and marinate in the situation because you hear Fearful and unbelieving shall have their part and all liars in the lake of fire. So anything that's chronic behavior like that, you must get help for. Because your life must reflect the fruit of the Spirit. Your life must change those around you. The Christ in you. And that's exactly what happened in his case because I'm not going to go into more details. He has to give his own testimony. But at the end of the day, it is his life that made a difference. The, and it's the Holy Spirit in him, the fire of God in him, that made a difference and change came. And so I want to encourage us today. It's not just that we must repent. We must repent, yes. But we must take time to access the things that will help us and spend time in his presence and get into some kind of a discipling group because you cannot make it on your own. And at the end of the day, at the end of the day, change must come to our families. You cannot be a Christian and it's the same old, same old, same old thing going on day in and day out where there are family members that are hurting and nothing is taking place for healing. And here we are every Friday, etc., etc. So I want to focus on fearful, okay? And I want to make some declarations over you, and then you're going to do some renouncing. Why is this important? There's fear of failure. There's fear of bankruptcy. There's fear of not being able to um, succeed. There's fear of not being a good enough Christian. There's fear of not being a good enough husband or a good enough wife. There's fear of not being the child of God that I'm supposed to be. Okay? So I want to speak this 
over you right now. And I want you to receive it. The last time we spoke this over a group, someone on Christian, they got breakthrough. The power of God's word. Amen. So I'm going to speak it over you right now. I announce that greater is the one that is in you than any devil on the side of your enemies. It is written, the righteous are as bold as a lion. By your faith in Christ Jesus, you are righteous. Receive divine boldness. I speak it into you right now. Father, any blocking spirit, mind binding spirits in the mind right now, I drive out in Jesus' name one way to the pit. I pray a shield around each person here, an impenetrable shield against any form of witchcraft in the name of Jesus. And any spirits that are leaving, go directly to the pit in Jesus' name. The angels of the Lord encampeth round about them that fear him. The angels of the Lord encamp around you who fear the Lord. The angels of God are with you. You have no basis to fear any man, any evil, any evil spirit. Because the Lord of hosts is with you, put your confidence in him. It is written, if God is for you, who can be against you? God is with you. You have no reason to fear in the name of Jesus. It is written, the Lord is your light and your salvation. Whom shall you fear? The Lord is the defense of your life. Of whom shall you be afraid? Father, move every wall, every wall, every wall that seeks to block the penetration in the mind and spirit of the people of God by the word of God. I break down those Jericho walls right now in Jesus' name. The word of the Lord says, The Lord is your def the defense of your life. Of whom shall you be afraid? Though a host of demons encamp against you, your heart will not fear. Though war rises against you, even in this you will be confident. The Lord is with you like a mighty, terrible one. You are not to be afraid. You cannot be threatened in the name of Jesus. Your persecutors shall stumble and fumble. Their everlasting confusion and disgrace shall never be forgotten. God has commanded you to fear not. Of the 366 days in a year, no single day is allowed for you to fear. So refuse to be afraid of anything. You spirit of fear, you are not in God's agenda for them. Leave now and go to the pit. One way to the pit. Spirits of fear, begin to leave. In the name of Jesus, come out to the mind, the soul. Come out to the emotions. In the name of Jesus, I dismiss you from their life right now. In the name of Jesus. Jesus said that the very hairs of your head are not only counted but numbered. Not one single strand can be removed without God's knowledge and permission. Therefore, put your confidence in the Lord who takes so much care of you. The Bible says whatsoever you desire when you pray, you should believe and receive in the name of Jesus. Therefore, I pray now in Jesus' name that you are set free from every captivity or attack of negative speech from your mouth or thoughts from your heart against yourself. And I want to make a statement here. There's no such thing as the enemy is too strong for us. Because that same spirit that raised Christ from the dead dwells in you. In the name of Jesus, the word says it. So through that same spirit that raised Christ from the dead, which is Jesus, the spirit of Jesus, you will trample on serpents and scorpions. So when the enemy comes in like a flood and feels like some strong blanket, take up the shotgun of the word and remind yourself that it is that same spirit that raised Christ from the dead that dwells in you. Devil, I bind you in Jesus' name. It is because we do not believe and we don't have to feel it to believe it. It is truth. 
no matter what. But fear is a doorkeeper. And when the enemy comes up against us, we get afraid. But what happens is, is the enemy is afraid and manipulates your emotions. So you think you're afraid when the devil is the one afraid. And you begin to think the enemy is too strong. In reality, the enemy is under our feet because the word of God says it. The word of God says it. Let the word of God that is quick, powerful, and sharper than any two-edged sword pierce through every negative thought or speech you have ever made and tear them down in the name of Jesus. Every negative word, everything you have thought, I shouldn't have this, and this shouldn't write it down and, and say, I reject it in Jesus' name. Write it down and reject it in Jesus' name. God wishes you above all things that you prosper in Jesus' name. Receive prosperity of soul before any kind of prosperity. Receive prosperity in Jesus' name. God has not given you the spirit of bondage again to fear. Therefore, every evil, the spirit of fear has done to your life, you reject now in Jesus' name. Every evil, every lying spirit, every spirit of suicide, thoughts and temptations that the devil has brought in the name of Jesus. Uh, we reject and we reverse it right now out of our lives in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, you have the mind of Christ and I bind every person's mind here to the mind of Christ in the name of Jesus. On your behalf, uh, I reject, refuse, and bind negative thoughts and statements right now. Cast down every imagination and high thing exalting itself against the word of God in your life. It will come for some of you every five minutes will be a negative and a complaint. Cast it down in Jesus' name. Resist saying it. Say something else from the word of God about who he calls you to be. Some of you have the I am's. Then declare it. Declare it instead. Declare it instead. I want you to know as well that when you say these negative things, you're not only saying it, and it's not only a word curse on yourself, you are cursing other people in your presence because it goes out to them. And it's affecting them. And they begin to feel affected because the negativity is too much, because the negativity is not of God. The negativity comes from a spirit that is not the Holy Spirit that wants us to believe that this is wrong and that is wrong and that is wrong. Listen, we could be in pain. We could be feeling down. We could be experiencing something negative, but in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I am a child of God. I am adopted by him. I belong to him. I reject everything the enemy sent in. Devil, I invoke the blood of Jesus right now over myself. I will take up the word right now and speak out who daddy says I am. If you get on like this, the devil will run. But don't allow the feelings to overtake you and make you say things. Because it is the feeling that makes you say the thing or what you believe causes you to say the thing and then you feel it. Your God is the father of faith. My God is the father of faith. And I ask that you receive the faith in God to increase. The faith of God to increase in your spirit, in your soul, in your body in the name of Jesus. I decree and declare that you will totally trust in the Lord. That you will not lean on your own understanding. That your heart and your mind will be filled with words of faith. Receive and speak words of faith right now in Jesus' name. The perfect will of God. For your life shall come to pass. The perfect will of God. For your life shall come to pass. The perfect will of God. For every person here. Every person here right now. I decree and declare the perfect will of God sh for your life shall come to pass. It is finished. It is written in the heavenlies. It cannot be erased. 
No matter what the devil comes and says and does, whatever he might hope, his hope is dashed to pieces. This moment, I have decreed and declared for each person here that the perfect will of God for your life will come to pass. You will abide in the secret place of the Most High, God. Because he is your shelter and your refuge today. Begin to be what God says you are and who God says you are. Begin to say it. Begin to declare it. It doesn't matter what is thrown at you. Begin to declare it. I'm challenging you today. No matter what is thrown at you. So it's thrown at you. So it happens. Just for that, declare who God says you are. Just for that, declare five things of who God says you are. Just because the devil felt to pelt something your way. Pelt some things back his way. Multiply. Multiply it by a hundred. Cancel it and send it back full force. One way to the pit. When the thing come, it don't matter if it's somebody close to you did it. The devil is behind it. See people in there through, their, through the bondage. So before you declare who you are, say, see this thing that just happened? I send it back full force to the dry places in Jesus' name. And I will now declare who I am. In the midst of what's going on, I declare who I am and whose I am in Jesus' name. Today, you will begin to be who God says you are and you will begin to walk in it in the name of Jesus. You are a person of authority, power, dominion, grace, and favor. In Jesus' name, because he says it in his word. You can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. You can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. All things through Christ who strengthens you. Get it into your spirit. You can run through a troop because the word says it. You can leap over a wall because the word of God says it. You can crush principalities and powers under your feet. Children of God, you can crush principalities and powers under your feet because the word of God says it. Now, if you're, if, you're not, if you're not a child of God, if you have not invited Jesus into your life, if you have not asked him to be Lord of your life, then you can't declare these things. So before you leave here today, Ask to be led to accept. In fact, put your hand up. Because you're going to end up getting deliverance inside of here. And if you do not belong to Jesus, more demons will come back. I do not cast demons out of non-Christians. I don't control the Holy Spirit. Sometimes the Lord will set a person free. And they're not a Christian. But I make a point of saying, if you are drawn to being in his presence, but you have not said with your mouth, Jesus, I believe that you died on the cross for me. I believe that you rose from the dead. I believe that you are my savior. I want you to come into my life. I want you to take over my life. If you have not said that, you are not saved because the word of God says you must speak it. Then ask and I will lead you through. The word of God says you can pursue, overtake, and break the necks of your enemies. The word of God says it. Saints, remind yourself. It is in the word of God. It is what David said in the psalm and the other parts of scripture. This is who you are called to be. Through the power of the Lord Jesus Christ, you will pursue and overtake and break the necks of your enemies. Henceforth, refuse to live in fear. Refuse to live in fear. Rather, let your fear and dread be upon the enemy. I declare it. The fear that some of you are feeling, I decree and declare that fear a billion times multiplied by. I invoke it upon the enemy right now. The fear and dread of the living God. I invoke it right now. Every fear that some of you have been feeling, that fear and dread is now the fear and dread of the enemy. As the Lord sets you free of fear in the name of Jesus. So the devil right now is shaking. And some of you, when you feel a fear, it's not you. It's the enemy in you. 
When, he's, when you start to read the word, you start to get a fearful feeling. That's the devil feeling fearful. He manipulates your emotions. And he begins to feel fearful and you begin to think as you. And then you begin to stop reading the word because you're frightened because of fearfulness. Wake up for me, please. No sleeping in here. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Henceforth, refuse to live in fear. Rather, let your fear and dread sh be upon your enemies. And as soon as they hear of you, they shall submit themselves unto you. As soon as... Many of you, when you recognize who you are and whose you are, you hear this week after week. How about this being the last week you will ever, ever walk in a way where you recognize what the, the enemy is attacking you. Attack back in Jesus' name. Crush him in Jesus' name. They will submit to you. When they hear you open your mouth, begin to read the word, they'll bow and run because they'll bow to Jesus. The Spirit of God in you. I decree and declare your confession. This confession is from the Word of God, so it stands sure. It stands sure, and the enemy cannot steal it away from you in Jesus' name. So I want you to say after me In the name of Jesus, I refuse to fear because God has not given me. The spirit of fear, but of power and of love, and of so a song mind. I bind the spirit of fear in my life. In the name of Jesus. Every power behind every activity of fears in my life receive the wrath of God and be consumed in it in the name of Jesus everything I have feared will not come upon me in the name of Jesus everything I have feared will not come upon me in the name of Jesus everything I was afraid of will not come to me in the name of Jesus the evil that everybody dreads in my family will not locate me in the name of Jesus. The f now, this is for those who are married. The failure and disappointment in marriage will not manifest in my marriage in the name of Jesus. The failure and disappointment in marriage will not manifest in my marriage in the name of Jesus. Okay, everybody, the financial failure and embarrassment I have ever feared will not befall me in the name of Jesus. The fear of backsliding that I have nursed or nurtured in my life will not come upon me in the name of Jesus. The fear of backsliding will not come upon me in the name of Jesus. The fear of not uh, being spiritually fulfilled will not germinate in my life in the name of Jesus. Let the fear of committing the unpardonable sin be washed out of me by the blood of Jesus. Let the fear of not being able to overcome any weakness in me dry up to the roots in the name of Jesus. Let the fear of not being able to, to overcome any weakness in me dry up to the roots. In the name of Jesus, I bind and cast out every fear of compromising my faith. In the name of Jesus, I bind and cast out every fear of losing my anointing and salvation. In the name of Jesus, I break every evil covenant all the way back to Adam that has brought fear into my life. In the name of Jesus, I break every evil covenant that has brought fear into my life. In the name of Jesus, I command every terror of the night that has brought fear into my life to stop 
and move from my environment in the name of Jesus. I command every terror of the night, every terror of dreams that has brought fear into my life, stop and move from my environment in the name of Jesus. You spirit of fear, loose your hold upon my life and my family in the name of Jesus. Every bondage that I am subjecting myself to by the spirit of fear, I break you in the name of Jesus. I refuse to be intimidated by any demonic nightmare in the name of Jesus. I refuse to be intimidated by any demonic nightmare in the name of Jesus. Every enchantment and invocation of fear being made against me, I neutralize you and I command you to fail in the name of Jesus, in Jesus' name. I want you to be silent, to be quiet and receive right now. In the name of Jesus. The word of God says, at the sound of my voice, strangers shall submit to me. Strangers shall fade away and be afraid out of their hiding place right now in the name of Jesus. Father, I ask you right now to saturate this place with more of your fire. I ask for more of the fire of God in this place, the consuming fire. My Father, if I be your servant, Father, I know you will back my prayer right now in the name of Jesus. And I ask for more of your fire to be upon your people right now in the name of Jesus and the power of the blood of Jesus to begin to soak in this place. The power of the blood soak into the foundation of every person here. Go deep, blood of Jesus, in the cracks and the crevices where fear has been residing all the way back to Adam. In the name of Jesus, the word of the Lord says in 1 John 4, 18, there is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear because fear involves torment. But he who fears has not been made perfect in love. And I'm speaking the word of God because every, every single devil, every demon of fear, all forms of fear must leave and go now to the pit because the children of God, I come in agreement with what they spoke through their mouths and what they've declared and what they've rejected, which is spirits of fear. The word of the Lord says, Hebrews 13, 5 to 6, he himself has said to you, I will never leave you nor forsake you. So you may boldly say, the Lord is my helper. I will not fear. I will not fear. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. The word of the Lord says in 2 Timothy 1, 7, for God has not given you a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. In the name of Jesus, 1 Peter 5, 7 says, casting all your care upon him, for he cares for you. The word of the Lord says, Psalm 27, verse 1, the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? This is what the word of the Lord says. Father, as the word is being spoken, Father, begin to set the people free. I command spirits of fear to come out of the mind, come out of the soul, come out of the emotions, and go to the pit in the name of Jesus. I disallow you from attaching yourself to anyone in here in the name of Jesus to the pit. Father, send your warring angels to begin to escort them out right now in the name of Jesus. The word of the Lord says in Isaiah 41 verse 10, Fear not, for I'm with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. Yes, I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. In the name of Jesus. The word of the Lord says, Philippians 4, verse 6 to 9. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything by fear, by, by prayer, not fear. Everything by prayer, 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 and supplication. 
in the name of Jesus with thanksgiving. Let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God which surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and mind through Christ Jesus. The word of the Lord says, finally brethren, whatever things are true, Whatever things are noble, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are of good report, if there's any virtue, if there's anything praiseworthy, meditate on these things right now in the name of Jesus. The things which you learned and received and heard and saw in me, these do, and the God of peace will be with you right now in the name of Jesus. Every wall of Babylon, break down right now in the name of Jesus. Every spirit of a witch that is blocking, I bind and cage you right now in the name of Jesus. And I command those spirits of fear, begin to leave the minds of the people right now. Leave the souls, uh, leave the emotions right now. Go to the pit right now in the name of Jesus. Come out uh, all the way back to Adam in the name of Jesus. One way to the pit, uh, the fire of God begin to move. Uh, the fire of God begin to move in this place. The fire of God begin to move. Our Father says in his word, Romans 8, 15, for he did not give us the spirit of bondage again to fear, but we receive from him the spirit of adoption by whom, by which we cry out, Abba, Father, Abba, Father, Abba, Father, Abba, Father. So we cry out in the name of Jesus. I command all spirits of fear, begin to leave one way to the pit right now. In the name of Jesus, one way to the pit. Father, begin, oh God, to purge, to purge, to purge, to purge, to purge in the head, to purge in the brain, to purge through the mind, to purge with the fire and the blood, the heart area, the belly area, wherever those spirits of fear have lodged themselves. In the name of Jesus, oppression, and depression, fear of the future, fear of hopelessness. Come out in Jesus' name. One way to the pit. I command you begin to leave right now. Begin to go. One way to the pit. Come out by fire. Every fear that has been sent against the people of God to cause them to be in bondage in the name of Jesus. Spirits of fear, begin to leave. Begin to leave. One way to the pit.